Hello, and welcome to the Western ACDA Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Virtual Series. My name is Emily Mercado, and I am an Assistant Professor of Music Education at the University of Utah, and I am on the Western ACDA DEI Committee. With us this evening is Dr. Julius Chakua. He is Assistant Professor of General Music Education at the University of Kansas. He received his PhD from Louisiana State University, go Tigers, and his Bachelor of Music Education and Masters of Music from the University of Pretoria in South Africa. Dr. Chakua is a seasoned music educator, having taught music in Uganda, South Africa, and the United States. In addition to his publications, he's presented all over the world, specifically on partnerships, arts integration, and culturally relevant pedagogy. Tonight, he's presenting on intercultural awareness in music education, and it is my honor and privilege to present my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Julius Chakua. Thank you, Dr. Mercado Emery, for welcoming me and for SCDA Western Division for this opportunity for me to share with your members, but also the wider music education community, one of the topics dear to me, intercultural awareness education. While I won't be able to take questions at this point, please feel free to reach out via email for any questions, comments, and feedback, for it is one of those topics from which um, continued learning and growth is a necessity. I'll soon share my email in my PowerPoint presentation. The topic is the need for intercultural awareness education for pre-service music teachers. Let me begin with a little story about my background. I am from Uganda, one of the countries that make up East Africa, and my country has over 50 cultural tribes and each with its own language. After my undergraduate studies and being certified to teach in elementary schools as a music teacher, I was posted to one of the biggest schools in the capital city, Kampala. The school is called St. Peter's Primary School in Zambia. The population of my school at that time was 1,500 students. My class, primary three red, or grade three red, had 120, 10 students, 110 students. Being a school in the city center with a boarding section, but also a wider community around the school of uh, people from diverse backgrounds, our students were children of people that came from different parts of the country to come to work in this big city, but also students that came from neighboring countries, that is Rwanda, Tanzania, Congo, Kenya, and uh, Southern Sudan. My school choir had over 80 members, and that was the first time and my first experience to interact with so many people from different cultural backgrounds at that level as, as a teacher. And as the choir master, as we are called in Uganda, I had to learn and teach musical arts practices in form of folk dances, folk songs, children's games, how to play different instruments, but also the cultural information behind these different musical traditions. On the other hand, I was also communicating and dealing with parents with whom we never shared a language, let alone cultural practices. And yet these were important intercultural skills that I needed in my job as a music teacher and a choir master. From different greeting gestures to different um, disciplinary approaches, how children talk to elders with some children forbidden from um, looking in the eyes of the elders as they talk to them. While other children, it is highly encouraged of them to others that must kneel or show a gesture of respect when talking to elders, also to negotiating how to tell parents about their children's behaviors and how different cultures approach that differently, to also knowing how to approach um, or how to teach certain songs or folk arts practices because of their functionality and cultural meanings in some cultures. Uh, I mean, it was quite a ride. Of course, there were several instances or moments where I made things bad and I was totally embarrassed or ruined what would have been a great teacher, student and a parent relationship because of a cultural blunder. Some of which based on a given culture, you know, take long to mend or want to be forgiven or let alone forget. 
So I lack the intercultural awareness skills that were important in my position as an educator, as a choir director, skills that I wasn't taught at college, but I had to learn on the job. That was over 20 years ago, but I must say that those experiences were valuable learning moments. Over the years, I have traveled to several countries, mostly through music education projects or professional engagements and uh, world music performances. I have also further educated myself through these intercultural exposures with fellow musicians, fellow educators, researchers and performers, but also strangers and audiences. Here at the University of Kansas, I teach undergraduate general music education courses, uh, pre-K-12 curriculum design and development, and general music methods for choral and instrumental master students. These are usually in-service teachers that come for an intensive summer graduate program. So within these courses, I have a unit dedicated to culturally responsive teaching. Uh, culturally responsive education is focused on the how-to, the pedagogy and instruction, and how students' backgrounds, their cultural experiences can be brought to the forefront in our teaching. Therefore, an effective culturally responsive teacher would need intercultural awareness education skills to infuse the culture of the students into the school curriculum in the lessons, you know, to make meaningful connections with community cultures. They need skills to empower children by using significant cultural connections to convey academic and social knowledge and attitudes. They need such skills to promote honoring and incorporating multiple cultural perspectives rather than defaulting to dominant monocultural schooling norms. They need these schools to, 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 to use cultural knowledge and experiences of diverse students to establish a caring school climate. They also need these skills to know about their students' lives, their family makeup, immigration history, favorite activities, concerns and strengths among other attributes, the shortcomings, their challenges. Teachers also need uh, these skills to create classroom climates that are conducive to learning for ethnically diverse students. They also need these skills to use effective cross-cultural communications because culture influences what we talk about, culture influences how we talk about it, what we see, attend to, or ignore, how we think and what we think about. These are skills that are necessary for culturally responsive teachers. And these are from uh, scholars that are prominent in this field, Jennifer Kay, Lindy McCoy, Ladson Billings. And these are part of those that I discuss when I also share the topic of intercultural awareness education. Now, I realized through these courses and the units that I taught that my students lacked an additional element that would make them interculturally aware, informed, equipped, and effective in realizing culturally responsive education. But when you think about it, as music educators, as music practitioners, researchers, performers, we meet and work with people from different cultural backgrounds, fellow researchers at conferences, our parents, our students, our audiences as performers. And yet, unlike disciplines that specifically have a course or units on what they term as intercultural competence, training uh, to emphasize intercultural skills, these disciplines in uh, international relations, diplomacy, international business education, international studies, these disciplines do so on the basis that uh, their students are being prepared to learn how to effectively communicate, interact, and work with people from diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds. When music education or music in general don't have that you know, 
on a large scale. So I found it essential to include in my general music methods classes and courses at the graduate level, a unit on intercultural awareness education skills. Such skills are indeed important today with uh, the heightened need for knowledge regarding cultural responsive education, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging issues. So this past summer, I taught this course for the first time. And it has since received enormous support. And I thought that this would be something I could share with our fellow music educators, especially those that may not have thought about it or are doing so already. And those that may want you know, to have a look at its feasibility. My discussion here tonight, although grounded in my experiences, it is also based in extensive reading and learning from scholars that have done much work on this topic, and some of whom have dedicated their lives to research on these unrelated topics. So on top of um, Geneva Gay, Gloria Ladson Billings, uh, Lindy McCoy and others, I also have looked at a uh, work by Bennett, Berardo, Dierov, Dulov, Gopal Krishnan, Krishman, Gopal Krishman, Jones and Miles, um, Kalio and Westland, Mietnen, Westland, Glashankov, Shimit, Abramo, Tapa, and Carlson. So I'm going to share with you what this kind of learning or education can entail. And let me begin by explaining a little about why and how I came up with intercultural awareness education. So available literature and research have intercultural competence as the main term related to the acquisition of such knowledge and skills. Competence refers to the ability to do something successfully or efficiently. So the focus remains on what people do rather than on the knowledge they have. So the connotation of the word competence implies a list of skills that can be learned. Emmanuel 2003, among others, have developed curricula for intercultural competence based on a business model that moved through identifiable stages you know, to evaluate a student's cultural development. Instead of examining the definitions of cultural competence to seek a consensus definition, she found that uh, there was not a complete agreement on the exact components, exact components of the construct. Mentioning that uh, different populations of professionals, administrators, or even academics valued different components of this definition. She did, however, propose that cultural competence is a complex, contextually defined construct and suggested that uh, you know, we move away from globally defined skills towards an institutionally specific definition. So as I developed this course, I stood about this because you know, titles are hard and they can skew meaning. Also, I believed that uh, we don't ever truly become competent and cultural matters. And the term intercultural competence has, in my opinion, gone a bit out of vogue. So I had these amendment options, developing intercultural humility, developing intercultural relevance, developing intercultural awareness, developing intercultural sensitivity. I zeroed down on awareness or sensitivity with the belief that it is questionable as to whether uh, humility can be taught through a course. Also, the word relevance seemed weak and wouldn't really get at the heart of the topic. So I dropped sensitivity because of its subjective affective conceptualization. In fact, Chen Starosta described it as a, a person's desire to motivate themselves to understand, to appreciate, and accept differences among cultures. So I then went ahead and even scrapped development out of this because while we can assess areas of development in other academic areas, in my opinion, it may not be possible to do so on such a topic because of its sensitivity and a subjective perception to it. Also, 
the realization of such understanding may develop differently and in various stages for every individual. So I left it as education, knowing that how someone uses it, how someone agrees or disagrees with these topics and subjects and discussions, that that be left to the individual. This means that uh, the student would take, would make connections with what they know and the experience on the topic. My expectation also was that uh, the learning outcomes be about what one can do after the class because of the activities, because of the readings, the instruction, the discussions, among others. In other words, I preferred the cognitive experiences because they may enhance one's ability to perceive and react, to process, to understand, to store and retrieve information, make decisions, produce appropriate responses on this topic in their practices uh, based on uh, this knowledge and the kind of awareness. Lastly, I thought of awareness as being more inclusive of not only music education, but even other areas like music therapy and perhaps those in performance in uh, musicology and so on. So here I define intercultural awareness education as the learning, the acquisition of those intercultural skills that are necessary to function in a culturally diverse setting. The key word is the awareness. What then that what then does this kind of education entail in terms of learning and knowledge acquisition, especially through a course? Well, this education introduces students to intercultural education in a global context, focusing on the development of cultural awareness of the self and others. This education also provides students with an overview of diverse worldviews and the application of those ideas to working in an intercultural setting. Additionally, it provides students with knowledge of the 21st century global cultural space, intercultural communication, understanding power interpretations and their effects on an intercultural space, as well as uh, non-verbal codes and the challenges of interculturalism. Students then would have the opportunity to learn how to develop also instructional activities that can foster cultural consciousness and accommodations as they develop you know, rational perspectives that can nurture and welcome the different cultural shifts that we are in today. So specifically, this education helps and allows students to understand the components of intercultural awareness so as to be able to develop skills needed to operate effectively in culturally diverse settings. These skills would help students to demonstrate knowledge of cultural differences and also the ability to adapt to audiences with diverse cultural backgrounds. This kind of education would allow students to identify common intercultural communication challenges and develop strategies that are tailored to context-based scenarios. This kind of education would help students to articulate the role of intercultural awareness education in fostering cross-cultural understanding, social justice issues, cultural diversity, equity, inclusion, access, and belonging. Also, this kind of education, what does it do? It allows students to grow more adept at translating what is learned in a classroom, in a course, from course materials into pointed inquiry, into discussion, and also being able to articulate their own views. We are in a time of increasing social difficulties based on several diversity dynamics here in the United States and around the world. So it becomes necessary that we in music teacher education reflect on these connections between music, education, and society so that we are able to prepare 
our teachers with skills and an awareness of dealing with these substantial social cultural changes. Let me now talk about intercultural awareness, you know, within music education courses, specifically about the why and the how. So, because of the increasing global mobility and migration, teacher education and schooling worldwide are on the verge of change regarding their approach to diversity. And although multiculturalism has been influencing education for decades, the recent wave of global movement has challenged education institutions and of course, teacher educators like us to rethink our curricula and pedagogical methodologies to counteract professional education that relies on test knowledge, socialization, and their apprentice model Researchers have suggested that our universities and teacher education programs um, that they should consider as learning institutions, particularly in such complex matters as they engage with cultural diversity, the element of intercultural awareness, humility, sensitivity. So the discussion around cultural diversity, however, has also taken different perspectives in the previous music education research, such as embracing the value of diverse musical practices, emphasizing uh, the music teacher's role as a social change agent in culturally responsive teaching in music education, and also understanding social justice in music education. In their recent publication, Roberts and Campbell examined the connections between multiculturalism and social justice in music education by exploring how you know, the five levels of multicultural curriculum reform that were formulated by banks can be applied in music education to establish multicultural social action and social justice. But then Westland and Carlson argue that uh, multiculturalism as a dominant ideology of diversity in music education that it's insufficient. And although in many ways it's beneficial, that it also works to obscure forms of inequality and injustice that fall outside of its conceptual frames. So Westland and Carlson instead offer a more heterogeneous and intercultural approach, which allows for the development of a wider ethical reflexivity and critical awareness of the inconsistencies that are involved. Research has also suggested that uh, intercultural music education courses, you know, can have dramatic effects on the attitudes and beliefs of pre-service music teachers through the development of intermusicality and intercultural understandings. So in realizing success in some aspects of intercultural awareness, especially areas that may challenge the status quo, but also challenging one's own beliefs, this is perhaps necessarily discomforting work when you think about it. Well, not in the sense that transformation and learning requires our student teachers to feel uncomfortable and threatened all the time, but in the sense that leaving their comfort zones can be productive in a generative sense. As Bodo stated, that some degree of discomfort may be necessary as we engage with these topics in opening the possibility of an emancipation that is founded on awareness and also knowledge. So Lorenz in 2016 introduced these five key phases um, in the process leading up to interculturality or intercultural competence and awareness amongst teachers. The first phase is the deconstruction phase. Is to see or rather to choose to see actions, values and norms in one's own culture, that cultural lens, and to be aware of one's cultural identities. This is to clarify one's own starting point and hopefully increasing 
one's understanding about you know, the consequences of the actions of our own identity work. In the second phase, that students learn to define and understand intercultural communication and the challenges therein by having hands-on experiences. In the third phase, Lorenz mentions ethno-relative understanding to facilitate the motivation and capacity for accepting you know, cultural differences and understanding the concept of pluralism, for example, in relation to epistemological issues. How about the fourth phase? Well, this one involves then cultural awareness as students learn to see themselves as cultural products and as social creatures and also understand intercultural sensitivity. In the last phase, this one is built on re reflexivity and this is aiming at internalizing a reflective intercultural approach towards the world, you know, to acquire knowledge on cultural and social actions and norms. Of course, there are some things that institutions have done and continue to do to realize cross-cultural experiences as a way of developing intercultural awareness for pre-service music teachers, for example, academic coursework and in-school placements. And although these are central to music teacher education, research has shown that the development of intercultural understanding requires additional, requires intentional framed experiences with cultural diversity. I mean, even where tertiary educators and curricula promote the inclusion of culturally diverse music materials by pre-service teachers, well, the use of such content is rarely modeled for them when they go in a, their practicum, in student teaching, in the primary and secondary placements. So this lack of direct experiences with in-service teachers continues also to contribute to the exclusion of multicultural experiences, uh, engaging with multicultural musics um, with the students, with the teachers as a way of learning for the pre-service teachers. So training pre-service music teachers to work with heterogeneous student populations in contexts that may vary greatly from their own education upbringing moves beyond the inclusion of culturally diverse music content. In other words, it's one thing to include music of diverse cultures, music from different cultural backgrounds. That is different from the elements of engaging with and directly with different cultural backgrounds and having the awareness to be able to communicate, to relate, to work with, to understand, to appreciate these cultures with music as part of the different facets, the different elements that make up these cultures or culture in general. So exploring the boundaries of music and music education directs attention towards some of the primary goals of intercultural teacher education more broadly to shift future teachers you know, from ethnocentric to ethno-relative ways of viewing the world and to develop critical understandings of the sociocultural dynamic of schooling. That is the foundation, we could say, which is the foundation indeed of culturally responsive teaching. The next part of my presentation is about culture. And the leading question is, uh, how does culture influence one's development of intercultural awareness skills? Um, given that culture is dynamic, it's complex and uh, prone to generalization, culture shapes values, beliefs, and worldviews. Therefore, in discussing and learning about interculturality, one cannot miss the element of culture in such discourse. So let me talk about culture and how it is significant and how it is a very important part as we develop intercultural awareness skills or as we teach about them to our students. 
The word culture, many scholars agree, is ambiguous. There's a myriad of definitions which are co-constructed and contextualized based on values, on policies, practices, and on the nature of social interactions. Practitioners like Jones, Gopal Krishman, and Miles suggest that uh, we should question the idea of the cultural expert and challenge the top-down outsider or ethic approaches to understanding culture. Alternatively, anemic approach or that insider approach from within, which entails collaborative processes where both outsiders and insiders are changed by cultural interactions. This requires developing greater awareness of the self, sharing knowledge, creating partnerships, and acknowledging issues of power, of racism, of uh, imperialism, and you know, the dynamic nature of, um, of culture. So a critical cultural reflection that involves an introspection on our own situations and experiences, connecting these to the broader concepts and dynamics is very important. This is also true for our broader goal of intercultural learning. So intercultural awareness, we can say, is not about you know, a passive absorption of cultural knowledge, which one then you know, applies in intercultural interactions. Rather, it requires that ongoing self-examination and critical reflection about key aspects of one's cultural self. A critically reflexive framework helps to make explicit the ways in which, you know, culture shapes our values, the way culture shapes our worldviews and our beliefs. So the ability to recognize and understand one's cultural context and culture itself and the many definitions surrounding it becomes a prerequisite to understanding and interacting with people from different cultural backgrounds. An intercultural learning approach encourages us to develop an understanding of culture, cultural differences, by reflecting you know, on our own context and experience. When we have developed some understanding of culture and cultural differences, then we need to be aware of the limitations to fully understand those other cultures. We need to recognize the plurality of cultures and be aware of any tendencies towards essentialism or let's say, generalizations that could reduce complex and dynamic cultures to some key definitive factors. For example, socialism of culture, which minimizes the internal differences within that culture. The challenge then is to recognize and embrace diversity through respect and inclusion rather than a process of exclusion. One should, however, Avoid falling into a very limited and narrow understanding of what we mean when we talk about culture. It needs to be seen from a broader view. Dynamic and fluid approaches to defining culture, you know, have a much better chance of capturing a sense of the complex, changing, and the multidimensional, you know, nature of this concept of culture. Because it's relational and fluid, as we've discussed providing frames of reference for negotiating the world. Cultivating awareness of our own assumptions takes practice and even you know, practitioners with substantial intellectual experience also need to continually work at questioning their assumptions as culture is an embedded and oftentimes taken for granted part of our lives. Which then leads me to, this leads me to, 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 to the next subtopic of uh, intercultural practice, asking ourselves that uh, how can we develop an understanding of some of the knowledge, the values and skills, you know, that are required when working across cultures? Well, cultural awareness involves not simply knowing something of, of the nature of culture or learning about the culture of others. It involves developing a deep and critical awareness of our own cultural selves, as we've discussed. And our position in relation to issues like cultural imperialism, of racism, of injustice, of, uh, of, uh, of um, equity and inclusion, and sent the process of excavating the elements that make up our cultural selves then is the development of a critically reflective framework. Learning to navigate cultural differences with openness, awareness, and respect requires explicit acknowledgement 
of the cultural self, making invisible, visible, or exploring those aspects that are not known you know, to ourselves or others as we develop intercultural practice. So effective intercultural practice is complex and it requires awareness of understanding one's attitude, values, knowledge, and skills in intercultural learning. And this should be considered as, you know, a lifelong, lifelong learning exercise. And one that requires an ongoing commitment to grappling with challenging concepts, being open to new ideas and experiences and engaging in critical reflection as we shall see about our own cultural selves like we've mentioned already, but also on the going process, on the ongoing process of our own growth into becoming interculturally aware. So while we can learn from the situations of individual cultural groups, our experiences, we also risk an arrogance of knowing if we think that we can you know, apply or transfer that knowing to all cross-cultural situations. Because I dealt with this, because I went through this, this because of that experience, that I can just easily transfer that, although it provides some good foundation. So interculturality, is an ongoing discovery we continue to learn, a perpetual wondering, the recognition that the other is not a void to be filled, but you know, a, 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 a plenty to be discovered. As researchers and scholars have mentioned, we start when we start to think that we have developed intellectual competences or awareness or these skills, then it is very likely that we have in fact started to close ourselves off from learning more, from understanding more, from exploring more, from actually what is happening. Like I've mentioned earlier, I want now to put this about the importance of critical reflection. It is a very important part of uh, intercultural awareness. How does critical reflection then foster um, intercultural awareness skills and how can such skills be developed? Well, the importance of critical reflection in intercultural awareness cannot be overstated. Without a reflective awareness of our own cultural selves, we risk reproducing cultural reductionism, imperialism and racism. So the need for reflective process, uh, a reflective process, a reflective practice as part of um, developing intercultural awareness offers us the means of becoming more aware of our own cultural bias. And reflection becomes therefore an important ongoing practice in many professions. Other strategies include cultivating an attitude of curiosity, knowing ahead of judgment, recognizing one's intercultural incompetence and lack of knowledge. This attitude therefore comes from the practice of um, cultural relativism, where one therefore tries to judge and interpret the behavior of others in terms of their traditions, their experiences, their cultural lenses. This does not mean that one should not take judgment. Well, it simply means that one should suspend judgment while engaged with aspects of, uh, of culture, with aspects that deal with, a, with a, a particular culture. This requires that as practitioners, as people who are trying to become better at these skills, that we cultivate the skills to suspend judgment, tolerate ambiguity, understand that there will be multiple truths and have a critical awareness of how and by whom knowledge is created. Further to this is that it is important to consider that every culture is a dynamic culture and that every interaction is a dynamic interaction as a collaborative partnership based on power sharing. These sentiments are also echoed in the concept of cultural humility, which requires a change in uh, the overall perspective and a way of life, you know, to be aware of power imbalances and being humble in every interaction with every individual. And also by exercising the attributes of openness, of self-awareness, egoless, supportive interaction and self-reflection, and also critique. So in learning about and developing such skills of interculturality, one will have to be open to intercultural encounters. It is important to recognize 
one's cultural self in the process, as we've mentioned, develop awareness of cultural bias and any ethnocentric tendencies in countering by doing, by trying out things, by experiences, by seeing, by observing, and adapting by adjusting to or negotiating and developing the confidence to navigate ourselves or oneself in um, the different intercultural settings that we might our, find ourselves in. But we can also be able to know, or we should be able to know, or we should know that uh, while such learning would cultivate one's openness to new experiences, and develop a critical lens, it is also important to recognize that uh, one can never fully be prepared for any intercultural experience and that these experiences frequently do not match you know, our expectations. It then can be helpful to view every interaction as an intercultural learning opportunity with our students, with our parents, with, um, with, um, within our communities, so through enhanced reflexivity and growing of self-awareness, we begin then to identify and gain relative control over our dispositions. Let me now touch on cultural humility as a very important aspect of intercultural awareness. So while cultural competence emerged from a business model and aimed at culturally ethical interaction, with the aim of training students or trainees a set of skills to be learned to aid in their intercultural communications and business negotiations in a culturally respectful way, the concept of cultural humility emerged in uh, the healthcare literature, owing to the need to assist to help healthcare professionals in ethically, in uh, ethical and compassionately care based. Um, approaches for diverse populations. And uh, while cultural competence speaks to abilities and understandings, this concept of cultural humility speaks to attitude, to inquiry, to the spirit. So cultural humility is suitable or suitable in developing intercultural awareness. Cultural humility incorporates a lifelong commitment to, to self-evaluation, to self-critique, to redressing power imbalances, to developing mutually beneficial advocacy partnerships with communities, with different cultures, with different people, even if we don't share a given background. Cultural humility, as of 2020 and Ross 2010 put it, generally includes three components, knowledge, attitude, and skills. These components are all critical for teacher education. Culturally situated musical knowledge includes, you know, the sociological background of music and music making within a cultural practice, as well as the historical and political cultural history of the people who make the music. So having this knowledge is helpful in being culturally humble, in building cultural humility. The attitude component of cultural humility addresses the issues of how we as practitioners perceive and conceptualize the other. Drawing on the work of healthcare educators, Ross gives an excellent summary of the many attitudes that can be relevant to music teacher education as to healthcare. Practitioners subconscious and conscious bias and stereotyping, recognition of our own privilege and understanding about community mistrust that is born out of historical and uh, you know, institutional practices. There are two senses in which we need to avoid bias and stereotypical attitudes, those towards the music and those towards groups of learners. The musical and pedagogical skills that embody cultural humility, these include new ways of listening, new modes of music teaching that depart from the way most of us were taught and a willingness to engage in lifelong learning of the multiple ways of making music, actively learning from others and reinventing our practice as we incorporate you know, new musical voices and expressions in our curriculum. Ross too further stresses the imperative of uh, you know, self-reflection, noting that it has become 
commonplace in the literature, yet it is often without structure. For Rose, as also Dulof also emphasized, self-reflection must be a systematic and subject to dialogue with peers and instructors. Not only does self-reflection aid in this, aid the student in recognizing and verbalizing learning, but it also offers the opportunity to make uh, decisions about evolving goals based on the different changing perspectives in our teaching, in our communities, around us, and in our curriculum. So as discussed earlier, this also speaks the need for pre-service music teachers' understanding of their own cultures and cultural background as they build towards cultural humility, their beliefs as essential tools in understanding other world cultures, diversity, and inclusion. In fact, Tapa, in discussing research related to, to, to this topic, found that uh, pre-service and in-service teachers viewed the rest of the world through what many researchers call you know, a monolingual, monocultural lens, that many would learn a few words and songs from other cultures, display pictures of diverse people, and talk about their food. This narrow and deficit outlook towards children or people from different cultural backgrounds, it demonstrates a lack of cultural humanity and the lack of knowledge regarding intercultural awareness. In other words, can we teach beyond the music and teach about the people? Can we learn beyond the music and learn about the people? Can we go beyond the, the, the musical practices and uh, build towards understanding the origins, the cultural contexts of these human beings, of the people that make these musics? That is cultural humanity. Therefore, a need to develop strategies to help our pre-service teachers and students to expand their knowledge about world cultures and acquire some semblance of uh, you know, intercultural humility and uh, awareness. Dai and Ming Chen, in fact, suggest that developing intercultural awareness skills requires one to develop a global mindset, which is closely related to individuals' affective cognitive and behavioral abilities. In other words, individuals with a global mindset are culturally sensitive, they're effective, open, knowledgeable, and flexible, and think critically and holistically to benefit the larger community. Similarly, Risanen, Kiwisisto, and Kusisto suggest that uh, development of intercultural awareness skills is a contextual, never ending, and unpredictable process, whereby intercultural sensitivity forms the basis of accepting others despite their differences. So based on the development model provided by Bennett and Bennett, intercultural sensitivity is achieved also when one can change oneself effectively, cognitively, behaviorally, and move from ethnocentrism to ethno-relativism. So this element of cultural humility and cultural sensitivity become important in intercultural awareness. My final thoughts, um, developing in interculturality, as the literature claims, is not an easy overnight task. It requires participants, scholars, we as educators to be introspectively mindful of not only our own cultures, but to be able to deconstruct the discourse of monoculturalism Teacher educators like us, pre-service and in-service teachers also need to delve deeply into understanding their ethnocentric views. We all have them regarding development, teaching and learning, and then replace them with uh, ethno-relativity through a reflective process. That means that the development of intercultural awareness skills is reliant on how teachers how educators interpret these underlying tenets of the self, and then it is contingent on how we as educators explore and interpret our own values, beliefs, and prejudices. So intercultural awareness education also requires, as we've discussed, a critical examination of thoughts through reflective actions, problem-solving skills, and ability to recognize and deconstruct assumptions 
and resolution to constantly question personal beliefs. As instructors in teacher education, we, we also must continuously challenge the deficit thinking model by engaging in a, a critique of society's sociopolitical structures with pre-service teachers and by also encouraging them to discover the missing link that will bridge that widening gap that social constructs such as race, gender, roles, and culture, you know, these ones that they accentuate. However, these gaps can only be reconceptualized if we learn to care for and about others. Because without care and empathy, these visions will not be realized. Thank you once again, and uh, please feel free to reach out via my email for any questions, any comments and feedback, and of course, networking. For it is um, through these interactions, these networkings, this sharing, that we continue to become better in intercultural awareness skills. Um, I am also on the journey of becoming better every day in my intercultural awareness skills. Uh, thank you very much for having me and um, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. <laughs>